Hi guys, we're back to the problem of the finite square potential, but this time we're going to look at the bound state solutions, right? So the potential is the same, it's the finite square potential, but this time the energy of the particle is confined between 0 and V0, okay? That's why we call it a bound state solution. The potential, I sketched it out over here, again, is the potential well, as we call it, because the potential is 0 and the region x between A divided by 2 and A divided by 2, and outside that region is V0, so that's the well over here like that. So if we were to use some classical mechanics, we can say that the particle will be trapped inside the well because the particle starts over here, it will travel towards the right and since it, when it reaches the point where the potential is greater than the energy due to the attractive nature of the potential, the particle will basically be reflected and bounce back this way and the same thing occurs when it hits this uh, potential wall over here, okay? It's, yeah, it will... Hi guys, we're back to the problem of the potential well, but this time we're going to look at the bound state solutions, right? So the potential is the same, it's the finite square well potential, and the bound state solutions occur when the energy of the particle is between 0 to V0. I sketched out the potential diagram over here, everything's the same, it's the potential well, because the potential is 0 and the region x between minus A divided by 2 to A divided by 2, so that's a well as you can see over here. Now if we were to use some uh, classical mechanics, we can say that the particle is going to be trapped inside the, the well over here, in this region over here. I say that because the particle starts in this in this uh, region, okay, in this point, it travels towards the right, and when it hits uh, this point over here where the potential is greater than energy, due to the attractive nature of the of the potential, the particle will be reflected back. And the same thing occurs when it hits uh, this point when x is equal to minus 8 divided by 2 and the potential is V0. The energy of the particle is less than the potential, so it gets reflected back and it will just back, uh, bounce uh, to and fro inside the well like so. Now, when we use uh, quantum mechanics, okay, and we can say that from our discussion of the bound state solutions, it's quite interesting because we will deal the discrete energy value. So that's the first interesting fact, the discrete energy values, unlike classical mechanics where the energy of the particle can take any values. And not only that, the second thing which is quite interesting is that we would expect um, a decaying wave solution at these points outside the well, and it will decay as they approach the wave functions will decay as they approach minus infinity to infinity but oscillate inside the well. Now, why is that so? Well, just basically, let's go back to the Schrodinger equation. Now, um, I've written the Schrodinger equation rearranged to its appropriate forms over here like so. Okay, as you can see, one is over here, one is over here, and one is over here. And the respective regions when x is less than 8 divided by 2, between minus 8 divided by 2 and 8 divided by 2, and when it's more than 8 divided by 2. So remember, when the potential changes, we need to solve the Schrodinger equation again because, well, essentially the potential is different, so you know we need to just uh, rearrange the terms appropriately. And as you can see over here, I've already written down the solutions. Now, this is um, so this is the Schrodinger equation that is applied to this region over here. Uh, bearing in mind that this K1 is now V0 minus E, okay? It's V0 minus E, like I said, the energy is less than the potential. V0 minus E will give us a positive value. So K1 squared needs to be positive. I didn't take the square root, but K1 squared needs to be positive. So if you go back to the to the work, okay, the, the um, algebra and rearrange the terms, you will get uh, minus V0 divided, uh, say subtract E, which is the positive value, and that will become a K1. And this is the solution, okay? Uh, psi1 is equals to A multiplied by E to the K1x. Now, I know that there's another solution over here, which is E to the minus K1x. Remember, there are two solutions to the Schrodinger equation because it's a second order differential equation, but I have already eliminated this solution over here and retained the, the A to the E K1x, the positive K1x, as opposed to minus K1x. Now, why is that so? Because for the minus K1x, as the, the solution goes to minus infinity, because remember, um, the, the solution is applicable to x less than a divided by 2. So x can be uh, less, uh, x less than minus a divided by 2. So x can go all the way to minus infinity. But this would be an unphysical solution because e to the minus k1x is equal to 1 divided by e to the k1x. And then if I have a minus infinity over here, it becomes it becomes a positive value, it becomes a infinity. Okay, one divided by uh, k e to the k one minus infinity. We bring that to the top. It will be e to the infinity, which will be infinity, and that's an unphysical solution. That's why I already eliminated the unphysical solutions. Now the same thing happens at the region when x is greater than a divided by two, but this time we would retain e to the minus k one x because e to the minus k one x it's one divided by e to the 
k1x and since k can x can go all the way to infinity such as um, x being more than 8 divided by 2 it will become zero it will decay down to zero okay so that's why I've retained the solutions that has a physical meaning and I've thrown away those that do not have a physical meaning so that is easy rearrange the showing the equation for the regions uh, x less than 8 divided by 2 minus 8 divided by 2 x greater than 8 divided by 2 and write the solutions eliminate those which are physical and proceed from there so as we can see, if we were to sketch out the probability density for psi 1, we would already get something like this, right? Something like this and something like this over here. These are the decaying solutions that we keep on talking about because they decay as x goes to minus infinity and as x goes to infinity, they, they decay. But what is of interest is really what happens inside the well. And maybe that is also what gives us this discrete energy values. For the showing the equation inside the well is given by this over here, which I have also rearranged it. Okay, noticing now that k2 squared or k2 is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. There's no potential, so as you can see, there's no potential of that. But what are the solutions to this showing the equation? Now, for me to answer that question, we need to go back to one of the theorems regarding the bound states, which I did talk in passing, but I hope some of you caught it.